And we're excited to see uh, Tiffany Zolkowski get sworn in tomorrow. We're looking forward to having a full legislati legislative body and be whole again and work through that process. I will say uh, I'm a little um, concerned about the tone and the switch from the House Democrats. Um, I think that um, it's mid-session and we have now started the finger pointing and the blame game, which is not helpful in the process going forward. I think we need to all stay you know, positive and focused on the things at task and um, um, you know, doing um, name calling and finger pointing is not productive to the process. So I'm hoping that we can get past that and continue to focus on issues that are um, going to take all of us to sit down and strategize together and make good policies for the state of Alaska. So I'm hopeful that uh, we can change that tone in the House Democrats and continue to work collaboratively um, as a body with the Senate and all four caucuses working together. So that's um, what I'm looking forward to. And with that, Representative Johnson. Thank you. So I, too, um, really hoping that we continue to focus on getting this this session done, um, 90 days. We've all talked about that. That's all our hope. Um, I have a resolution out there, HJR 6, that calls for doing no business in, until we get the budget done, which I, I know that the minority has been working very hard on that. And um, so I'm hopeful that that is going to continue to be the goal on both sides. Um, I know it can be done, but I do have cons concerns in the sense that it looks like as we our budget continues to expand, um, we're being set up to have to go for an income tax. That's just something I'm concerned about. And then on resources, my main committee, we have a couple things going on. One thing that we heard yesterday is a uh, uh, another, what it looks to be a land grab, um, establishing a, another refuge. So we're, I'm just working to take a real good look at that to make sure we're not putting, locking up a little bit more of Alaska's land. So, thank you. Representative Tellerico. Thank you, and uh, good morning. Um, an old expression that I've, I, I used to use, my dad used to use when he wanted you to be a little more efficient was to double down. And I think it's uh, at day 52, the, um, the progress that I see right now, it's, I, I hope everyone's got that in mind that we need to double down and really get to work, uh, put in some extra effort now. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to waste any time. I, a lot of my constituents are certainly concerned about the length of the session. The length of the session has been something that's been discussed for several years. So um, I'm here. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to work. And so I, I hope we can get everybody to use that old expression and double down so that we can uh, be a little more efficient this year and, and get the work done for the people in the state of Alaska. Thank you, Representative Wilson. Good morning. Good morning. So finance started the amendment process. Um, we were on a really good roll and, and looked like we would be done um, before today. Unfortunately, we instead of going till seven, we started going to only five. And then yesterday morning it was canceled. This morning it was canceled, and now we just got next week um, and found out that they have now moved the budget after today to Tuesday or Wednesday. So what is the stall? I mean, we have 38 days left to get the budget done, and that's not just on the House side. We need to be able to pass it over. So I thought we had a really good um, portion going with it, but I guess the biggest concern I have is that this will be the first time that the Democrats will take people's dividend to pay for government. Before, the dividend wasn't paid out, but it was at least left in the earnings reserve so that we had an opportunity to be able to give it back. And this year, that will not happen. They have increased the budget over $20 million well, at the same time, we have asked for reductions of approximately $9 million. And as you saw, even with a fund that wasn't even being utilized by the governor, utilized as a slush fund, they couldn't even give any money up in that. And that is very concerning. Thank you. With that, we'll open it up for questions. If you could just say your name and affiliation. We're with the Associated Press for Representative Millett. I think it uh, was the first news conference here last session when you were outlining goals for the caucus. And you mentioned one of those was to protect the dividend. That means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, as far as your caucus goes, how do you define protecting the dividend? 
Thanks for the question, Becky. Um, and in our caucus, you know, we have a diverse caucus with a lot of different views on what protecting the PFD means. So I can't speak for the caucus, and I think that's one of the things we've always said. Um, for me personally, I've always said that I would like to have a fully funded dividend unless we have a structure in place. Um, the percentage of our market value, the 50-50 plan, something so the public can see that um, we're following statute. So for me personally, uh, that's what it means for me to protect the dividend. And I granted each one can answer that question if you'd like. Well, we did do a positive step yesterday in finance, although a couple of weeks ago we tried to do some inflation proofing with 2019. It was defeated. However, yesterday it came back and it was passed. And that is one way of being able to take care of the dividend is, is to make sure that we're making the investments that we need to mm -hmm. so that it doesn't start decreasing. So I was happy to see that amendment back and that this time it was received in a positive way. And I, I would agree with the idea that we need a plan. Um, we've, you know, and, and you're all aware that there are several different concepts out there, several different ideas, different percentage points where they utilize the earnings reserve and, and the way that would be divided and everything. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll be able to put minds together and come up with that plan so that people have a good understanding. I think, I think one of the most critical things is uh, we need to devise something so that it's explainable to people and that they understand what's going on. And, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with planning ahead. Planning for the future is actually a good thing. But I, I think to solidify some type of plan with everyone is going to be critical. And, and um, as uh, Representative Millett said, the, uh, you know, a POMV plan or, or something that, that we can really wrap our hands around. But there, there are a lot of different concepts out there. And, uh, you know, we hear a lot of good idea, bad idea, and this and that. So we really do need to, I think everybody's still open to massaging whatever it is that we need to do so that we can move ahead. And I'll ask an education update. I have two questions. The first is, um, what education legislation do you see passing this session? I know um, people seem to think tax, the education tax credits are going to pass and the rehire, retired teachers legislation. Do you guys have any positions on those? And is there anything else out there that you see, see passing or possibly passing? Go ahead, Dave. I, I, think, I think both of those that you mentioned um, will, will go through. Um, there will be, there's no doubt there'll be, uh, there'll be a lot of debate on increasing the basic student allocation. Uh, that bill is out there. My biggest concern with that is, is that that ranges, I think, somewhere between 19 up to $25 million because of the way the formula is figured out. And I'm not exactly sure what the final number would be. But uh, <clears throat> I, I have a large concern there because if we move that, I've talked to all of my district superintendents. Um, prior to the session and told them flat funding is, is what we should really plan on with, with the BSA. And we've got some other needs out there, some things, you know, that um, deferred maintenance, for example. And uh, I have a big concern that if we actually transfer that over and add that over, where will we generate the, the backfill money to actually put that in? And in my own district, just speaking for myself, we've got some deferred maintenance projects that I think are critical right now that we need to do. Um, several of those superintendent, superintendents had told me, they said, well, well, we'll figure it out on the flat funding, but, you know, we've, we've got this water tank that needs to be replaced in Chalkitsik, and we've got some other issues in some other facilities. Now, all of the facilities have a little bit of work. Some are a little more major than others. So I always have that concern because if it's a shift of money, if it, and it turns out being a shift of money, then, you know, the maintenance is really important too. We want students in safe facilities and facilities where they have water and things like that. So um, that's probably my biggest concern. Several of my superintendents said, well, we'll prepare for that. So, um, but I, I do think the rehire will go through and I think the tax credits, the tax credits are incredibly popular with the university and the school districts. Also in the budget, we have a hold harmless provision in there, um, helping schools be able to consolidate. Um, a, a lot of times it's more, financially advantageous to keep schools open even if they may be half full just because of the way our formula works. So what this would do is that if they consolidate schools, they would still get the same amount of money mm -hmm. for three years so that they could make the, the, the adjustments they really need to do. And I think that's definitely a positive for districts. Yeah, it's definitely a positive for my district. I think that's something that came out of our um, Anchorage School District uh, hearing. So we did pass over an education uh, appropriation for about 10 10% of the budget, which was uh, 
some early funding. I, I think that was a good idea. I think it was a good time to do it. But unfortunately, the majority did not take the, the minority's uh, funding mechanism for that. So we passed over our education budget with only that 10% funding. So that was a real disappointment to me. I think it was a disappointment to see that happen that way. And, and uh, we had a solution for it. We stood there, stood for it and, and we're, we're ready to fund it and it didn't happen that way. So that was, that was an unfortunate uh, uh, event in, in the education funding. And if my other question is for Representative Tallarico, your uh, bill to let a school district transfer a school to another school district, can you tell me the impetus behind that? Is there a specific school that? Yeah, and, and thanks for that. That, that came up, um, uh, two um, contiguous districts um, had made an arrangement and agreement. They signed an MOU for the Rampart School to transfer into the uh, Yukon Koyukuk District from Yukon Flats. And everyone thought that would be best for the districts. Um, the, the, what we had thought is that could be done via regulation, that they could, that could be done via regulation. Several people, uh, Commerce and Economic Development, indeed, had both looked into that. And uh, they don't think that they can continue to do that, that that actually can't be done uh, with a regulation, or at least what they had told me. So um, really what I did, I, I put that bill in to be a placeholder. We're still looking into the regulatory possibilities to do that. And in particular, I'm very interested in local control. And when both local school boards make that agreement and that arrangement, and they're both comfortable with that, I would much rather see them um, do that. But I, I, I wanted to include the contiguous because I didn't want, you know, a school district from southeast to maybe have a school from Bering Straits or, or, or something like that. They really have to be adjoining. I think it would make sense. But, it, you know, um, I don't have the details like those school boards do, like the um, both for YK and Yukon Flats. But uh, once they're in agreement with it, that, that's really, I think it's more appropriate that that's a local decision. Um, and uh, so I'm just trying to put a mechanism in place so that they might be able to do that. It sounds like you're not going to push that this year. Uh, I, I wish I had a really clear answer. We're, we're still looking into the regulatory possibilities of, of being able to do that. But I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think, I think we, we have to come up with some resolve rather than just a memorandum of understanding that has to re be repeated on an annual basis. Um, I, neither school district, I don't think, really wants to write a memorandum of understanding every year. So, um, and, and like I say, they were in agreement to do that. So right now, Rampart is is uh, operating under Yukon Koyukuk with a memorandum of understanding. Thank you. Hi, this is Rich Mauer, Channel Two News. Representative Wilson, you said this is the first time that Democrats are taking the people's dividend. Does the other body? Uh, led by a Republican chair, any responsibility in that? Currently, it's in the budget on the House side. It's not, this, it was added by um, Representative Seaton. Uh, I don't know what the other side will do, but this time I'm talking about our budget um, and exactly what is contained in it. Now, it'll be a completely different conversation once it goes to the other side, whether they keep that part in there or whether they have a different idea of how to do it. But currently, we're talking about the House side budget. Uh, Tim Bradner, Legislative Digest. Uh, two budget questions, so I guess these are probably for you, Representative Wilson. Uh, you mentioned the, the, the money allowing schools to consolidate two schools that are underutilized. Is that, maybe you could clarify, that's in the, the language in the House budget now? Yes, it's in the language section. So what it is is that we have a school size um, portion of the BSA that gives more money per student 